good evening from the Steel City. And let me just step out and take a look at the skyline. It is absolutely unbelievable. Syracuse hoping to paint this city orange come tomorrow afternoon. Hey guys, the anticipation continues to build atop the SU Hill. The nation's premier college basketball pregame show will once again make its triumphant return here to central New York. There's nothing quite like college basketball season here in Syracuse. Good evening. Welcome here inside the Carrier Dome where the Orange are taking on Southern New Hampshire in the very first exhibition of the brand new season. So after all, Eric Dungy goes out of winner here at Syracuse University, proving that it's never too late to find some success. With the Orange here at the Camping World Bowl in Orlando, Florida, I'm Matt Hosworth. A trip out west to Portland, Oregon is what's on the line tonight. It's the round of 32, pinning the Syracuse Orange up against the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Before you laugh at that mascot name, you better do your research. Now take a long look at it. That's the remnants of the basketball court here inside the Carrier Dome. The last time you'll see a basketball court here inside the Dome this season. And it ends far too soon for a team much too talented to not be playing in the Sweet 16. Yeah, this was a celebration in every sense of the word. And I might add, this is a celebration because this program is finally relevant again. There's so much more to talk yeah. about. The Colgate Raiders making their first trip since 96. Also, the SU women hosting from the Carrier Dome. This could be the second time in as many years you guys go to the NCAA tournament. Obviously, last year, almost defeating Tennessee. I guess, tell me that experience. What does that do for this team heading into this game? Of course, I am standing on Jim Beheim Court, the man who made this place what it is today. And even in the midst of all this heartbreak, Coach Quinton Hillsman after this game told me that this university and athletic department will rely on family to grieve and move forward. Welcome to Beacon Skiff Apple Orchard here in Lafayette. And yes, Latavius Murray just continues to give back to Central New York. Don't believe me? Here's proof. 14 to 4, Baldwinsville on top. And that's another goal, another Baldwinsville goal, 15 to 4. It seems like the Bees are well on their way to a Section 3 Class A championship. It's time to rev those engines as NASCAR makes its yearly pit stop to upstate New York's premier road course. Good evening. I'm Matt Hosworth, and welcome to the Glen, a place where hundreds of thousands of racing fans will visit this weekend as the cars, trucks, and RVs continue to pour in. Serving as the very first player to earn a unanimous vote, all 425 ballots in favor of Mariano Rivera. It should be a sight to see looking around these bleachers tonight and seeing these white flags waving around. But you know what? If you ask these Syracuse Crunch players, none of that matters. Shulkoff Field continues to be a house of horrors for Syracuse men's lacrosse. Remember, just two years ago, the Orange lost on this very same surface. Today served as a defining moment in this Dino Babers era. How would he respond to firing someone on his coaching staff mid-season for the first time in his coaching career? As is the case with each and every top lightning prospect, the road to the palm trees and blue skies of sunny Florida usually means a pit stop right here to the War Memorial in Syracuse. But yes, things do change. He quickly realized he needed to take advantage of his athleticism, riding a slew of Division I offers all the way to the University of Louisville. The racetrack is one of the few places in the sports world where social distancing can be done. Six feet apart across the grandstand here at the famous Oswego Speedway. Only problem with that, New York State hasn't indicated when fans can return and what that will eventually look like. And this agreement will undoubtedly ensure that Central New York remains the boxing capital of the world. Syracuse and Connecticut continuing their storied rivalry inside the world's most famous arena. Good evening. I'm Matt Hosworth. More so than the actual rivalry, though, the cause this game supports is much more important. Here is a look at the top half of the West Regional Bracket. Of course, we're focused on this matchup here. Syracuse, the 8 seed, taking on Baylor, the 9 seed. There was a growing sense of optimism that Joe Girard III would choose the Syracuse Orange tonight, but when Duke and Michigan are also on the table, nothing is a certainty. The Syracuse Orange getting so, so close to pulling off what would have been the upset of the day. Good evening, I'm Matt Hosworth. Instead, the Orange heading home thinking, what if? Let's show you how it all shook out. Here come the Clemson Tigers down the hill and onto the field. It was yet another deafening crowd, but Sean Riley says, hey, 
bring it on. Absolutely. It all looked good for the orange early. Trevor Lawrence getting the start for Clemson. He fumbles on this exchange, and Alton Robinson right there to scoop up the fumble. That leads to Andre Schmidt, who's been absolute money for the orange this season, capitalizing here off a 51-yard field goal. Are you kidding me? The Clemson fans couldn't believe it, and neither could Andre. 6-0 Orange at that point, but the Tigers would roar soon after. Travis Etienne takes the direct snap, puts Clemson ahead, 7-6. Yes, Gabo approves, but the Orange had an answer. Eric Dungy fools the Clemson defense. Look at this, Taj Harris coming down with the football, a 51-yard gain down the field. The Orange in business from there. Dungy calls his own number, high-stepping his way into the end zone. Orange fans could not believe what they were seeing, and here's the play where everything changed. Lawrence running for his life. Evan Foster lays the boom on the freshman quarterback. Another look at it. Certainly got his bell rung. Trevor Lawrence would not return to this game, which means it's time for the third stringer. Here he is, Chase Bryce. He's ready to roll, but the Orange kept their foot on the gas pedal. Schmidt hits on another field goal to put Syracuse on top 16-7 at the half. We move to the second half now. End of the third with Syracuse leading by three. Sterling Hoffrichter's punt muffed by Clemson's Amari Rogers. Jamal Custis right there to pounce on the loose ball. Are you kidding me? The Orange have possession inside Clemson's 10-yard line. From there, give it to Dungy again. Get out of the way. His second touchdown run of the game, and SU took a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. The Orange could smell the upset, but the Tigers say not so fast. It's Bryce to Etienne who finds his way into the end zone. Clemson only trailing by a field goal at that point and turns out this is the play of the game Clemson facing fourth and six near midfield Bryce so composed finds T Higgins the first down and then some a huge play to keep the Clemson drive alive and that's when ETN ends it with a touchdown run too easy for him and the orange come up short on a late touchdown in Death Valley <laughs> so, uh... there's a thin line standing between teammates and competitor but the one thing that exceeds both is friendship. Rex can always make me laugh, no matter what he does. Um, especially if we're in public, you know, he's he doesn't really care about what people think of him, so he'll he'll do stuff to just make us laugh all the time. Um, it's not bad either. It's just well, Eric's quite a prankster. <laughs> so uh... you see, on the field, they're battling for the same exact job, but off it, well, those smiles really tell the story. Well, I just want to say that I'm Eric's number one fan. I love the kid. He's, like I said, he's like a brother to me. And you have a brother. So to, to say that, um, I mean, that's got to mean something to you, um, you know, because you know what that brotherly bond is like. And to, to share that with somebody that yet you didn't even know, you know, just a couple of years ago, I mean, what does that mean to you? No, nah, I mean, it's, it's incredible. Like, I mean, I really, truly do feel like he's a brother to me. Isn't it funny how a football, an oblong-shaped ball, can lead to a friendship that lasts a lifetime? But for Eric Dungy and Rex Culpepper, their friendship is not defined by a football. Consider the way they met and perhaps the reason they met are not exactly the same. The reason has a whole lot more to do with life or death, which is precisely how a brotherhood was formed. Are you ready? The ringing of the bell signals cancer's defeat. But the road to get there was anything but easy. Hearing myself say like, wow, like I have cancer and kind of coming to the, coming to the realization that that's, you know, that's what's going on. I, I told Eric, and I was pretty frank. I was like, Eric, I, I just got diagnosed with cancer. You know, I, I didn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. Uh, I mean, Rex is the healthiest guy I know. He, I mean, doesn't need all this stuff. I mean, always is hyping on me. You know, I'll come home and I'll see little candy bars in my bed because Rex is joking with me. But bad things can't happen to good people. And I mean, Rex did everything right, so I didn't want to believe it. Testicular cancer proved to be no match for Rex Culpepper. And when he needed his best friend the most, Eric Dungy was there, accompanied by his mother too. My moms are like best friends, basically. They're always, they're always chatting. Um, so you know, my mom looks at Rex, you know, the same way. She was just as worked up about she it as me. She flew down and got the apartment yeah. ready for my mom yeah. when I was going through chemotherapy. And she was out getting, you know, just small things like utensils and groceries. So that as soon as my mom got here, everything's ready it's because during the treatment, I needed my mom around. So we got her an apartment, and Eric's mom was instrumental in helping that happen. Culpepper is now fully healthy and back on the field for the Orange just three months after learning he had beaten cancer. 
And although Dungy will be the starter, Eric has made it crystal clear Rex Culpepper is his inspiration. No matter what was happening, he was literally always just, what can I do, what can I do? I mean, fighting no matter what. Always had a smile on his face. It was, I mean, I still, I mean, people always ask me, you know, who's, who's your inspirations in your life? I used to always just say my dad, but now it's, you know, my dad and Rex, and I mean, I truly mean that, not just because he's sitting right here. I, I mean, I say that no matter what. It's the way he handled everything. It was, it was incredible. It's easy to handle. It's easy to make it through when you got friends like Eric and friends like the people that I've made relationships with on this team. I mean, ultimately, these guys make me happy. Eric makes me happy, and that smile on my face would be, you know, for my interactions with him, and that could truly get my mind off reality and kind of take me away from the whole situation that was going on. It's a story of two young men who come from opposite ends of the country, showing us all what true friendship really is. Reporting atop the SU Hill, I'm Matt Hosworth.